Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, um, to the next um, X night. I'm glad to see here so many people, and I want to ask if you can hear me and an emoji. Okay, then we will mute everyone for the moment. So, oh, if you can still hear me, send an emoji. Do you consider yourself a creative person? Let's see, send an emoji if you consider yourself a creative person, yes. Okay, I see, very much creative people in here. So our guest today will raise the question, can virtual reality make us more creative? Uh, he's a resident for the uh, X Nights. Um, he had multiple talks in here and um, I am honored to get uh, him on the stage. He is Christopher Wert. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, Markus. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, great to see you here. Uh, now we are, we can say we are in the metaverse and when you can hear me as Markus, uh, we can make the test with the emojis. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, great. So now uh, at home in the metaverse, yesterday I left the metaverse and I had a presentation in the reality. Can you imagine this? Crazy, isn't it? I was in London at Confex, International Confex, an uh, event conference, and I was talking about virtual events a little bit and how the metaverse is going to change virtual events uh, in the future. This is a very exciting topic. But today we are in VR, we are in the metaverse, so we talk about something that uh, has to do with it. And yeah, uh, let's start it. So, virtual creati creativity can uh, make us more creative. So uh, I was thinking, I was wondering uh, when I prepared this talk, um, have a lot of prejudice against new media. And this is also in the description here of the event, uh, uh, smartphones, uh, uh, make our attention span smaller or uh, in earlier days it was said TV is destroying uh, the fantasy of kids or even books uh, were considered uh, as dangerous for, especially for women in the 19th century and in the 18th century uh, it was said hey uh, don't read books you get in different words it makes you crazy yeah and um, same thing here uh, with VR, but uh, when we uh, take a good look at VR and when we uh, yeah, use it in the right way, we can really try to push our creativity forward. And this is really exciting. I think uh, the topic of VR, of virtual reality, um, I think when we have so many creative people inside here is um, yeah, like uh, the greatest playground in the world for creatives so um, I think we can find a lot of nice things for us that we can use in our daily business so now I try to go to my first slide and it works and I have to give kudos and credits in this presentation to Professor Dr. Vanessa Borgman she cannot be with us uh, tonight she's in Spain in another conference and in the reality crazy woman, crazy professor. She's in the reality uh, and she prepared this with me and there's a little sign slam. This is completely from her, but I try to do my very best. So can creativity uh, profit from virtual reality? So this is uh, how we look in real, in the reality, this is our uh, real world. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, with creativity looks like this, yeah? Wow, Eureka, we have the great idea. It's awesome and uh, it's a great fun and great pleasure to have ideas. 
when we have ideas in our brain, it's uh, like a mixture of cocaine and heroin, and this is quite a strong thing. So that's why a lot of creatives love to create ideas because when something comes up, it's uh, an exciting uh, feeling in your brain. But creativity normally uh, looks for us like this because it has a lot to do um, fear because uh, when you when you don't have the idea but uh, you need one tomorrow and the idea is not there yet it's not so nice uh, do you have ever do you ever have to develop an idea under pressure my question and then we can make a game so people with a yes can go here to the yes and people with a no can go to the no here on this side so please move, um, please move around here and um, no, okay, most, pe most, of us, most of us have to do, uh, have to deliver ideas under pressure and yeah, okay, nice to see, let's go on and uh, next question, afraid of it, yes or no? So, uh, yeah, some people are not as afraid as the others. Okay, but uh, I know this fear. And um, in my uh, my normal job um, at, uh, at Fogged Arms, I always have to deliver ideas. And when I have a briefing and there's no idea, there's also a little bit of fear. What could, could happen? Maybe this time you don't have an idea or you have an idea that nobody will like. What happens then? Yeah, so uh, a little bit of fear is always involved in the creative process, but it's also kind of a fuel. The fear gives us the power, and uh, um, and uh, we find something to overcome this fear. So it's uh, it's important to have this. But let's go on. So can VR help? Can VR help us there? And uh, here in this uh, book, you can see. Um, uh, uh, a dystopia where people only where we are and they get totally lost and dumped and out uh, and uh, in the end they disappear Why? because they're just in this headset that's not what we want we want to be uh, fresh and creative and so we have uh, in this presentation tonight uh, I will give you five steps for uh, and five hacks for the creative process. But uh, before this, we have a look into uh, the science. What is creativity? And how does space influence the creative process? Isn't it exciting? The space in which you uh, are developing ideas has influence. The ideas. <laughs> Uh, let's have uh, the little uh, science slam. So, uh, creativity is the ability, alone or in a team, uh, on the base of knowledge uh, to create new and unknown uh, patterns, to find new and unknown patterns, and to think uh, in those new patterns and then uh, to act in these new patterns. So, it's all about finding new uh, patterns. And uh, when we have a look at our brain, we have, um, of course, two halves. Everybody of you has two halves. Even if you are an avatar, you have two uh, brain halves, and they are both very important. And when, uh, when we are here more the creative uh, people, then our um, one side of our brain is a little bit stronger. So we have uh, the lateral and the uh, convergent uh, thinking. Uh, the vertical thinking and the lateral thinking. Uh, one side, of course, is analytic and the other side is playful and intuitive and uh, likes to take risks, likes to uh, uh, try new things, and we need both. Um, when I worked in advertising agencies, it was uh, also the people were separated in these two different categories. There were uh, uh, the account guys, 
They were on the other side, one side of the brain and the creatives on the other side and always fighting and saying, hey, you are so stupid, you are so stupid, but that's, uh, that's totally wrong. You need both sides. Uh, count people and creatives have to work together to get everything done in time and uh, in the right budget. And without the count people, a lot of projects uh, don't happen uh, because we creatives are too chaotic or lose ourselves in, in rabbit holes and details. So we need always both sides. And that's important. And even when you are creative, you also need your uh, uh, vertical side of your brain. So it's not useless to have this both uh, elements in your brain. So we need to link those two. And when we link them, we have a lot of power. And uh, creativity and uh, the influences of creativity, um, there are a lot of elements that influence it. So we need to feel well to, uh, to be creative. Uh, our brain must, uh, must be in, a, in, a, in the right mood. Then creativity uh, can happen. So this is uh, also a nice scientific chart uh, about uh, children. Um, when we look at the one side here, um, chill, ch child uh, has uh, not much knowledge, but is very open and very creative. And the more knowledge we have in our life, uh, creativity goes down. This is a normal process. And uh, partly, of course, it's good. Eat, uh, don't touch uh, the hot plate uh, anymore, yeah? Uh, as children might do. But uh, it's from being creative. So it's very important to uh, recapture the inner child and be playful and uh, be open for new solutions. And this is a complicated chart. Even if I have to explain it in English, it's even more complicated. So uh, it's uh, the vertical and the lateral thinking. And in the creative process, we start uh, uh, with our um, vertical side. We need the preparation. We need to understand the problem. And in the end, we have to evaluate it and check it if it's the right solution. So in the beginning and in the end, we, of course, need our cool inside. And in the middle, we need our inside our creating so we uh, try to find the ideas when we are brainstorming when we are trying out and playing new things and when we have the illumination when we have uh, ideas when uh, when they when they appear then in the end we have to evaluate again this is um, always uh, the the creative process and to start this process also you have to you have to be in different moods so uh, that's why account people are always in a different mood than creatives, and uh, account people can destroy the creativity of um, of, uh, of of creatives when they don't know that creatives need different uh, environment and this playful approach. Um, and this is very nice. This is about brain waves, your brain waves uh, at the moment. So when we have uh, our cold brain working, we are we are having beta waves, but uh, to be creative, we need alpha waves. Alpha waves are a little bit more like this, and they are more relaxed, and uh, this alpha waves um, state of the brain, it's possible to have ideas. Uh, with the beta waves, it's possible. Beta waves are good when we have to do a lot of work, when we have to do a lot of Excel, when we do a, have to do thousands of calls and thousands of meetings and have to organize uh, lots of budgets and stuff like this. Then we need our cold brain, of course, the fast alpha waves. But when we are pondering upon um, alpha waves, and that's, of course, uh, 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 true for rooms. When you are in a room full of people with uh, beta waves, that's, it's not possible to have separated. We need a room where the creatives or we 
and be safe, where we can uh, have our beta waves and can relax. But when we try to evaluate the ideas, it's okay to have beta waves. It's also good to have beta waves and to find decisions. So um, this is uh, about uh, what's going on in your brain, the brain waves. That is very important. And this is something from Vanessa's research. This is a furniture that is very good for this um, alpha, uh, beta waves uh, because it's a special space and nice forms. Also, this um, is made for uh, beta waves, a room where we really can think the lighting is. This is a, a research a project from Fraunhofer Institute. And uh, another thing um, from research uh, with mice, yeah, uh, Mäuse, uh, they worked with mice and uh, measured the number of neurons in their brains. Yeah? Uh, so the creativity of the mice and they measured that when the mice are in a great environment that is uh, full of uh, playful things and colors and, and tasks and something too crazy to do, then the mice have more neurons in their brains, are more creative. And then, of course, they had a control group with mice um, where the, uh, the mice were all in a, in a normal environment. And um, yeah, I asked Vanessa, hey, Vanessa, hey, they put the mice from the normal environment later than in the, uh, the other pleasureful uh, theme park mice environment, and she could not, uh, could not answer it, unfortunately. But uh, science says if you are in a very uh, nice environment with a lot of uh, things uh, uh, that are nice for you and, and playful, then you become more intelligent and uh, can become more creative. And of course, Universität Erlangen, uh, a study they found out uh, when you move yourself, uh, you can push your creativity. Uh, walking in cre is good for creativity. They are scientists, mathematics, or old Greek philosophers that love to walk and uh, the idea um, of, of the academy was also walking together, the Greek academy, walking together, talking together. This is also very good to be in motion and uh, in the blood flows. And when we are in the right environment and, and have a little movement, then uh, creativity is also um, uh, able to come. Then, of course, it's very personal, everything. So uh, our personality is very important. When we are in a room that is uh, yeah, against our personality, we don't feel well there, then we cannot be creative. Our personal needs need to be fulfilled. We need to be in a room uh, where we feel accepted and where we feel well and where we can uh, relax and have, our, uh, have the right brain waves then. And of course, um, a lot of um, influences help us to be creative, music, sound, smell, Touching things, tasting things, and visual stimulations are very good. And uh, of course, we still uh, cannot smell or really proper touch things uh, in VR, but uh, uh, I'm sure it's coming in a few years. But we can, of course, stimulate uh, our visual uh, senses and uh, can create a great experiment, multi central experience. And of course, sound works nice. Um, and then uh, we have some fields where we can use uh, uh, creativity uh, or we, where we can push the creativity with the VR. As, as an example, teleport in different uh, worlds or on different planets. Then there's uh, the ability to time travel or we can shift uh, our shape. We can be uh, a, a totally crazy avatar in games. We can become uh, giant robots. Of course, we can have uh, we, we can be young or we can be very old, and we can create great sensory illusions or visual illusions, and we can also, of course, have uh, unexpected adventures. And this is everything, all these elements, in experience we are our creativity. So, um, 
generally what you are doing now, uh, you are stimulating your creativity. And then, of course, uh, a big field are the unexpected adventures. And uh, in the end, uh, when we are always discussing about the metaverse, uh, and some people say, hey, the metaverse and VR, um, it gets close, it get, is getting close to reality, but not better than reality. The truth is, we can enhance reality. And like this uh, picture here of the uh, Burning Man Festival, can enhance the, the reality and uh, create uh, things that are even more exciting than reality. But um, uh, I'm reading a book at the moment from the philosopher David uh, J. Chalmers. Uh, Liam, I wanted to talk with you about it later. Um, who's saying we should not decide between reality and virtual reality because he says uh, virtual reality or reality is the same. It's just reality because it's the stuff uh, we percept and you don't need to decide which is better it's good to have both and uh, to to learn from both elements and then um, always great uh, grow always great experience when you've been in vr and then you turn off your headset and go outside and look at the clouds look at the trees how well they are made or uh, the shadows or reflections of water in, uh, on the street in the rain. Um, uh, you can you, you get uh, an eye for the details. Even people uh, that are or like Marcus, uh, they all the time work with those environments, those virtual environments, and then they can uh, see how well the reality is made and they still work on it to um, yeah, to improve it. So let's unwind your creativity and uh, expect uh, the unexpected. So let's go to our five steps and five hacks. This was our little uh, science slam uh, about uh, creativity and stuff and uh, the rooms. And now we take a look at the five steps and the five hacks, of course. We have um, uh, we have the creative process here in five steps. Uh, the first step is uh, when you have the cool brain. Yeah, when you have the alpha waves, you have to understand the problem. Yeah, you are solving. You it's the briefing. Yeah, what do you want to do? What is um, what is the uh, yeah thing you need to find? Yeah, this is very uh, there. There are also tools. To, to help. Then the second thing is the feeling. And uh, in the design thinking process, this is the part of the empathy. If you have to uh, find a solution for a certain group of people, you have to create empathy for this uh, group of people, of course. And then um, uh, in my experience, when I was not able to find this empathy for, for a target group or something, I was not able to come up with something that was right. So it's a very important part to, uh, to, to feel uh, and to learn uh, also emotionally about uh, the, the problem you want to solve. So these two elements go together, one and two, and they are very important parts. Then three flow is uh, as you call the brainstorming, just go crazy, find ideas. Then four is uh, my favorite one in VR because uh, when you are pondering on a problem or really into something and uh, uh, you have, your brain is full, and it can be very good to put your problem, um, to put your problem aside and to do something totally different. When you do something totally different, uh, your subconscious has the chance to work on the problem. And uh, very, very often when we find an idea, uh, something from one box in your brain and from another box in your brain, uh, they come out of their boxes and they come together and then they are uh, form your new idea. And therefore, it's very important also to, to let your subconscious work. Those when when you have these connections, uh, these are these uh, moments under the shower when when the idea is coming or when you're having a walk or 
uh, they can, these ideas can come uh, yeah unexpected, and uh, this is the great thing. Um, and um, and VR can help you to 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 put your subconscious to work because the immersion is so strong that it can uh, power you and push you in totally different spheres uh, immediately. And then the last thing is focus. Uh, is again a uh, more cold brain. Um, the focus phase, you need to uh, decide which one of your ideas is the best, which one do you want to uh, work out, and uh, then the, yeah, the work on the ideas to and therefore also uh, apps, but there, there's, there, there's a lot of improvement in my opinion in VR. So let's go on. Uh, let's have a look at the first step at the understanding. Here I have a film. Next stage. Step inside your ideas with Noda, the premier mind mapping app in virtual reality. Build Can you hear the sound? trees of innovation and dive into your imagination oh, like never before. Watch your ideas come to life with simple speech to text. Much like your brain stores and recalls information. Okay, I deleted the sound. So this is the app Noda. But uh, there are a lot of apps like this where you can create uh, a mind map and put the, the problem and everything in front of you also together with a group. Um, there are a lot of other apps where you can do similar things. Um, um, but uh, this is uh, a trick that you can do here. You can really create very nice mind maps, and structure your problem. And when you visually structure it, it's easier to understand and uh, yeah, talk about it uh, together. A lot of people also use it uh, for brainstorming. I'm, I'm not um, a fan of brainstorming mind maps, uh, it's, it's, it's maybe because I did not properly learn to use it and not used to use it. So it, uh, for many people, it also works nice to do a brainstorming. So, But this is very cool to really visually put your problem in 3D in front of you and discuss it with the team or for you alone. And this uh, creates a lot of clarity to understand the problem. And then uh, the feeling to dive inside. Uh, here, this is a, a very old app on, on, on the Quest. It's called Wanda. And it really helps to, uh, to dive into environments, to dive into environments where, where your target group lives. You can really uh, be there where they are and uh, let everything, yeah, pour um, into your impression. This is very good to, yeah, also to uh, to feel a location when we are planning events. It's very important to know where are we going to, what can you do there, how's the atmosphere there, and um, yeah. But here in our uh, hack uh, steps, it's uh, all about feeling uh, for the people you work for and uh, for you find a problem for if it's in New York or if it's uh, in uh, in the Schwarzwald yeah you can go there and uh, feel the atmosphere and uh, uh, get closer to it also you uh, if you have to create something for uh, for a forest or for a desert or for um, yeah skyscraper you can go there and just feel the atmosphere to find uh, better ideas to get an impression and it's very cheap it's not looking as good as reality in the wonder app but you can st stand on the burj khalifa on the highest building in the world uh, in no time or you can be in a uh, in a theater in mexico you can be everywhere it's really amazing and and can help a lot in my opinion then there's the thing with the flow. This is uh, the holy grail of creativity. 
a lot of people call it brainstorming, how to find your best ideas. And um, I love uh, the theory of John Cleese from Monty Python uh, that says uh, when you have to be creative, you need a place, you need time, you need time, uh, and uh, you need uh, humor. And uh, of course, time um, is twice. It has a reason. So the first thing, you need a place where you can go. Maybe it's a place in virtual reality where no one disturbs you, where you are on your own. Then you need time that your brain knows, okay, I'm going to be creative to develop ideas for 30 minutes or for two hours longer. So then um, it's like uh, the brain thinks like... Uh, um, like uh, yeah, someone in the gym when you tell him yeah, how long is the workout? And you, we say we don't know the whole day. We say oh no, but when you know, hey, the workout is one hour. Okay, I can do that. Or oh, 30 minutes. Okay, I can do 30 minutes. Okay, and the brain says okay. So uh, when we go in our creative session, it's very good to set the time. I'm going to be creative for 30 minutes, or for 15 minutes, or for two hours. Don't know. So just to set a time in your place. And then the second time is very nice also to have your deadline because we need deadlines. Otherwise, we would not start maybe uh, to solve our problem. And then, of course, humor is very important um, to, yeah, to get in the mood. And uh, as jokes, connect different things uh, together and bring, uh, uh, bring something in different contexts very nice um, uh, to to push this uh, this uh, creative ability in our brains. So let's have a look at the flow. And this is an app that is not made for brainstorming. It's not made for creativity. But uh, in the last month uh, or, or maybe over a year, Joe was still here. You are still here to, uh, to, tonight. Uh, use it with friends for brainstorming because you are in such a great environment here. Oh, I have to click the film that you can see what I'm talking about. So, so again, I'm You can see water. Water is always good for creativity, in my opinion. You see something flowing. So this is a phishing app. Yeah, this is a phishing app, and we hacked this phishing app as a uh, creative app. You can sit in beautiful places in South Korea, uh, as you see here in the video, and you can have a fishing rod, and you can fish, and you can uh, talk. The, the the fishing or the, the gameplay loop in this game is very easy. They made it no more complicated now in the second iteration of this app, but uh, it's very easy. And the good thing that you have something to do is, okay, now we start brainstorming. When you say this to each other, then you are under pressure. When your hands have something to do with this app, so, um, with a with a little task that is not too complex and it's easy to for your brain to get in your flow. Like sometimes maybe you have experience. Uh, it's nice when you when you drive a car, then you also can come up with ideas because you're doing something, you're you're moving, and um, um, a lot of brain power that could disturb you with questions like from the cold brain side. Huh? Uh, I have to do a phone call. I have to wash the dishes. I have to call my mom, I have to do this and that. Uh, this part of the brain is um, occupied with, uh, with fishing. Yeah? So it helps a lot to be creative, but it's not, even if this app is not uh, meant for, for creativity, but it's really great. It's a great fun. And there are a lot of games where you very. Okay. Can everyone still hear? Or are we going to see some sad faces if... Okay, it's working again. Yeah. 
Ah, it's back again. Okay, everything nice. <laughs> okay, this uh, was the phishing app. And uh, yeah, to be in a great place, it's enjoyable to be. And as I said, um, I don't know if my voice was gone, uh, a lot of apps put you under pressure and under stress, which is nice when you want it, like killing zombies or stuff like this, but are you really under pressure and in stress? And uh, in this um, in this case, in the fishing app, you are at the water, it's just pleasure and relaxing, and then you can do nice things and, and just talk. But the downside is it's only for maximum four people, so maybe nice because when when it's more people, um, uh, then uh, the conversation doesn't work so well. Maybe so. Let's see the, the ghost future. Okay, then the fourth part uh, to switch off when you're really uh, into something to, to put your brain somewhere else to get your subconscious to work. And there are tons of apps uh, to do this. Yeah, this is a nice app. Uh, with Kai, I don't know Kai if you are here, we are playing tisch tennis, yeah, and this puts you immediately, yeah, by Kai, this puts you immediately uh, in a different um, place, uh, because you are occupied uh, with the playing, and you are in a, in, uh, in a room somewhere and playing, and you're immediately immersed uh, in, in this new environment. Then, of course, even more brutally uh, immersed is uh, this very simple but very good boxing app. And um, you can uh, do a training, but you can also do real fights. And also professional boxers use this app for training because you have a real comp uh, opponent in the ring and you don't want to stop. You want to uh, end the fight and it's a really good, uh, really good training. And really the immersion is so strong um you uh, can uh, you forget everything else then another thing is um nice thing about vr you can do things you've never done and uh, uh i've never been skiing because um i think i'm a little bit afraid of uh, slippy things yeah uh, and uh, as a kid i've never been skiing because my parents didn't so i i never learned it but i was curious so i used this app Half and uh, was carving some uh, powder, and um, it's really nice. You're also immediately immersed in a in a world and have to find your balance in this uh, in this uh, thing. It gives you uh, environment. This one I haven't tried yet. Uh, here you're climbing skyscrapers or mountains. Also very immersive. In the virtual uh, environment. And this is a a, a game. Um, what, what you can play with four people. This is very, very immersive. It's hard to explain. Um, it's uh, you are in a room and you play a tabletop game with four people. And uh, when you play it, you you have uh, yeah positions and and and, and game uh, game champions and it sucks you really in. It's really very immersive and you get. Uh, at, um, different uh, areas and now this is uh, my absolute favorite game uh, w what which made me uh, cry now uh, maybe not cry but scream <laughs> of fear uh, in VR because it's so immersive and so intense and so made this is um, it has horror elements it has thriller elements but it ha has also a lot of comic relief uh, there's a lot of fun and there's also a lot of beauty because the scenery is uh, uh, also very uh, beautiful. I just uh, show you the trailer. Hope the sound works. I'm here. So what's the plan? If we can get this weapon, what we're doing here could change things forever. There's no straight shot to the vault. I'm gonna head inside, find a way out. Got it. 
I'm with you every step of the way. You're gonna need a gun! Don't worry, it's unloaded. It's unloaded now! Combine channel's really picking up. They know you're coming. You need to get out of here, now. Oh, God. They've got Dad. They're gonna find out what he knows, and then they're gonna kill him. All this is my fault. I never told you. I couldn't. I'm so sorry, baby. You are not safe here. Alex Bams alone cannot prevent his fate. Close your eyes, honey! Really exciting game, and uh, yeah, this is a spoiler in the end. And uh, I wish there were more games like this. Um, Liam, uh, you told me to play Asgard's Wraith. I also really much enjoyed it, uh, and it's also a really cool game. Um, and uh, you can be very big and very big and very small in Asgard's Wraith, and have to fight but have also beautiful environment the uh, story awesome. uh, should be more of this, uh, big story uh, games uh, in the arm but uh, hopefully they are coming so this is a very immersive experience you dive into it and then you have to remember when you turn off your headset hä huh? what's this ah i live here it's really uh, really immersive and um It helps you to get away from from the uh, from your yeah, from your work or from your uh, um, problem you're solving, and gives yeah, your subconscious the chance to do the work for you. Isn't that great? You have fun playing something, and uh, the subconscious is doing the hard work. So this is uh, something that is really awesome. This is one of the best things of VR and uh, virtual reality and metaverse we can have. Okay, so let's have a look at the next, at the last thing in our process when we had our great idea, when um, there's this germ uh, quote from Bertolt Brecht, um, nach den Mühen der Höhe kommen die Mühen der Ebene. So I can try to translate it clumsily. After the... Um, The efforts of the mountains are coming the efforts of the flat dance. So when you have this spectacular idea, uh, then the work starts to to uh, make this idea happen. And this is uh, yeah, most important. It's a very important uh, um, yeah part. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. One percent inspiration, 99% percent um, transpiration. Um, this is also a quote. I don't know who said it. It's like Newton, maybe I don't know. So it's uh, very important here. This uh, this moment. Um, and uh, there's one app at the moment. Uh, I think a lot of you um, I can recognize that they have tried it. Um, I show the trailer. Um, this is. Um, Horizon workrooms, and I think it works really well to be in a, a conference setting, in a clean conference setting, uh, to have a, a cool mind and to discuss things and to work things out. You have a really nice function with a um, board. You can use your computer very easily. You can integrate it and share your slides and really work together because. Um, The, the cool thing here is you can mark your table in front of you and then can lay your hands on your real keyboard of your computer uh, during uh, even when you are in the app. So it's kind of a great hybrid experience. And this um, is a really great tool to, to work on things and to discuss things. Of course, it would be also good for the first step where I showed Noda. So, but it's just, uh, yeah, it works, works really well. We can discuss it later, uh, what your experience is there. 
um, I wish more people would use it and I w wish to have much more meetings in there. And uh, I think VM people, you are using it also for your daily uh, business. Yes, okay. Jasmine. Wait. Jasmine is showing hearts, so it's true. She has experience with it. And yeah. This is uh, the novel Snow Crash. Nobody did read it. Who read it? Uh, Mr. Professor read it. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But nobody else. Um, okay. So um, I think um, I would really say this is very readable, even if it's from 1992. Uh, it's a great fun to read. It's very ironic and it's a thriller. And uh, it's it's just uh, pushing our imagination how, what is possible in the metaverse because this is the book where the metaverse was born, where the metaverse was first mentioned. And, um, uh, that's why I'm emotionally connected to the idea of the metaverse uh, because it's coming from this book. Because I read this book many years ago and I never thought this would be reality some, some time. And... Um, but we are getting there. We are getting there. Um, David J. Thomas, this, prof this professor, this philosopher, um, said in the same book I was mentioning, um, in a few years, we can't decide if we are in the reality or in the virtual reality. Hey, what are we going to do then? This is going to be very exciting and a very big philosophical challenge. Yeah, but uh, Snow Crash is very cool. And for the work, the app I would like to have uh, is in Snow Crash, a hero protagonist. Uh, of course, the protagonist in this book uh, is a hacker. At the beginning, he loves pizza. But in the uh, general, generally, he's a hacker and he has a workspace where he can go to work. And we, where uh, even before Google, he had a Google in the uh, yeah, a real um, academic um, professor that was answering his questions and uh, help to do research. So this scenery would be great to have uh, for focus and for deep work. And um, it would also be great to do deep work in VR. But for me, it's also something we can discuss. For me, it never worked until uh, now. Um, to write something in VR and to um, try to um, work something out um, would be nice to write a text or when you sit on the moon or somewhere in a group spot. Not, um, not ready there or I haven't found apps where you can do it like this, where you can do deep work and focused work. Um, which is also, of course, uh, an important part of creativity. But uh, to give you something here for this, uh, I give you a tomato. And uh, uh, I love this tomato very much because this tomato is the part, important part of the Pomodoro technique. Yeah? Maybe a lot of people know it, um, but don't use it. And uh, I really, um, I knew it for, t for a while, but then I really started to use it on a regular basis and, and it saves my ass so many times because uh, the Pomodoro technique works like this. You put it on 25 minutes and in this 25 minutes, you don't do social media, you don't check news, you don't uh, go online, you don't answer emails, you do nothing. Um, thing is, uh, go somewhere else where no phone or computer is in a totally different room and write by hand yeah? on a piece of paper. Yeah? This is a great thing. And you can't imagine what you are able to do in 25 minutes. It's really, really great. Also, when you have to work on a presentation or on something, uh, your brain says, oh, no, I don't want to do this. Uh, let's play a game first. Uh, let's make a cup of coffee first. Our brain uh, always wants to um, avoid this great work because it's uh, using a lot of energy, yeah. And the brain wants to save energy. 
And when we say for, to our brain, okay, hey, let's do 25 minutes and then we have a break. Then the brain says, okay, and it's really cool because it helps you also to start tasks uh, you're um, pushing away. So this is a great technique, even if it's uh, not in VR, but maybe we can find something somehow to put it in VR. But this is a great thing that helps uh, to be productive and get things done, the Pomodoro technique, to trick your brain 25 minutes or eight minutes when you're starting or maybe 45 minutes, don't do anything else but our thing we want to do and then we have a little nice uh, uh, break and then we can then we start over again so this is a, a great trick to do things so these are basically our five hacks um, with pictures um, to understand the problem feel it to feel the people uh, you want to reach with your idea and then the the, the great brainstorming app uh, the fishing app where you can really let your ideas flow and your thoughts flow and have fun then the immersion the games that take you away in a totally different place in no time to put your subconscious to work then in the end uh, for the productivity to get things done to work it out and to get into the next steps and to fill the paper and to write something um, this is the Pomodoro technique or maybe we're g getting uh, better apps and uh, can use apps like um, workrooms for this so that's it and I say thank you yeah I guess uh, we get see some emojis This is uh, Vanessa. When you want to make a picture, when you want to write her and complain that she's not here, you can check her uh, check her out on LinkedIn. Here, this is Vanessa, and uh, this is me again. Um, thank you. Let's talk. Awesome. Night, I let's have talk. put the hand raise feature on, so if anyone has any questions. Free to hit that button to raise your hand. I can queue them up. You're okay with answering some questions, aren't you, Christopher? Yeah, that I'm here. Awesome. Because there are okay. so many intelligent people here. Maybe <laughs> indeed, indeed, I can yeah. answer the questions. Yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. I, there's great presentation, by the way. I always feel like uh, every presentation I'm at in here seems to be um, very specific to me. Because uh, remembering these five steps to creativity is very important right now. So I'm I'm happy that I was here to see this because uh, I was I was letting some of these slide. The sort of the, the gaming side of things uh, and the, the taking a break was something I wasn't doing uh, enough. So I've been feeling a bit stressed lately, and I realized looking at this that that's why I haven't got the balance right. So thanks very much for that presentation. It was perfect for me. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, we do have a question. Uh, is it uh, Bedouin? Is it Bedouin? Uh, I'm just going to put you on air now. Hi, go. that's my Burning Man name. I actually, okay. when um, Burning Man got canceled, so somebody created this virtual world and somebody named me. Uh, that's my player name, of Burning Man. Uh, um, oh, so cool. that's the first time I got exposed to this VR world. Um, is there going to be, I, I know Burning Man is happening this year. It's not, it's not going to be a remedy. Is there going to be a VR Burning Man also? Um, you can attend um, in person. Maybe I'm someone else sure. can answer it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, there, there, there tends to be um, in different platforms doing it at the mm. same time. So I imagine there will be. Yes. Great. Thank you for the presentation. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for being oh, here. So. If there are no questions, Liam, I have questions to the audience. Okay, we do have we do have one more. <laughs> Sorry, Bedouin, I'm just taking the mic off you now. Thanks for the question as well. Uh, and Prof, we've got uh, Thorsten over here. Let's give you the mic. Oh no, you've dropped your question. It's gone. <laughs> was it was it up there accidentally? Okay, here it is. Now oh, it's come up again. There we go. That's it. Now you do that. You're on air, Thorsten. You're on air. 
Okay, so a uh, very pragmatic question. So the game looks <laughs> amazing, um, but it's not available on Quest. Is that correct? Or uh, I've never seen it. So, oh. yeah, that's true. It's uh, in on Steam, oh, and okay. you need a uh, uh, yeah a proper cable, a cable connection PC, and then, yeah the cable connection okay. to your computer. But you can also use. Uh, you can also stream it on your uh, on your headset. You need a gaming uh, gaming machine. Yeah, you can use Oculus Link. Uh, I think it uh, has got oh. Wrath. I was thinking about that's the same. It's mm -hmm. the sort of these two these titles are AAA titles, uh, big titles that require a pretty beefy gaming PC to run them. Uh, unfortunately, um, but that will change as we know. That's going to change in the future as the technology gets better and better. Uh, we're not going to have to worry about that, which I'm looking forward to seeing games like yeah. that and Asgard's Wrath yeah. just, just able to come straight into your Quest headset and uh, and use it there, hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks yep. for the question. All right, I'll... Um, do we have any more questions from anyone else? If not, you can uh, pose your question to the audience. Yeah, um, Yasmin and uh, the people from Fallen People... Liam, uh, what's your experience in meetings with uh, in, with workrooms, and what's the difference to to other uh, to other uh, apps? Well, I actually haven't been in workrooms yet. I'm ashamed to say oh. I haven't joined one of the meetings okay. in workrooms yet. But if uh, any of the team want to answer, anyone wants to raise their hand, or you can just come up and, and megaphone if you want. Mm -hmm. I see, see, see Yasmin moving. Also but... there. <laughs> Jörn no, also knows yeah. workrooms, I'm sure. Oh, uh, Thorsten, Thorsten does as well. I can see his hand going up. Anyone want... Okay, hold up. Here we go. We've got... Uh, there you go. If you want, I'll give you the megaphone again there. Thorsten, you have the megaphone now if you want to talk about your experience yeah. with it. Yeah, basically, so I was... Uh, we, we were doing a seminar with students. Uh, we through different metaverses and did uh, work in different places. And what really stood out um, was the emotions that were generated with the students in work. And I think it's very much because of the, it's so subtle. Um, so the way they animate the, the faces, uh, where they create the faces, um, mm -hmm. all the haptics and the atmosphere. So it's really multidimensional and it's really, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, this is nice, and I love it. But um, so you, I even get kind of wrinkles um, in uh, mm -hmm. in in workroom. So it's it's it it really reflects without eye tracking. They they reach a a level of high fidelity, which is stunning. I think that's the um, that's the the explanation why it works so well. Mm -hmm. It feels better because you see more expression in the faces of the avatars. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is very important, and uh, this is also a thing we are going to see uh, improving in the future. Yeah, definitely. I think we, the more mm. we see that, like the more interesting this is going to get. Um, the space in in terms of kind of the feeling, right? When we talk about the mm. feeling in these five steps, yeah. like uh, when you can sort of convey emotion in here uh, in a way that mm. people can actually register based on your, you know, how your face changes in this environment, it's going to be really interesting. We do have another question, uh, Bjorn. Yeah, Bjorn, right. I'm just going to give you the. I'm going to put you on air now. There you go, and give you the megaphone. Uh, can you hear me? Does it work? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We yes. Can. Okay. Great. Yeah. I just want to add the the really cool thing about workrooms is audio. Um, mm -hmm. like here, audio is crackling. Sometimes it breaks up. Yeah, and uh, it's it's better to mute people and stuff like this. Yeah, what what we are having right now. Yeah, you have to hand somebody a megaphone to make him speak. And in uh, in workrooms, it works really well if all the microphones are on the whole time. When you do a presentation, you get like um, certain sounds that you make when you are in a room together. Yeah, or you get a Continuous laughter or something like this, and that's something that that I've only seen in workrooms work that well. So that that's just what mm -hmm. I wanted to add. It also adds very much mm -hmm. to the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. I think having having good audio servers is super important, mm -hmm. um, and we've seen that. I've been around of different platforms. 
Um, some have had some really awesome features uh, when it comes to audio. Uh, and I remember back when when High Fidelity was there as sort of uh, metaverse, still 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 around, still exists, but um, they've kind of moved to more spatial audio. But their their audio was was really good in the sense that you could have a concert like in a venue like this, but you could have several stages, right? And then you could control the audio drop off. So when people moved away from the stage, it would get quieter. So you can control things like that which something you can't really control in alt space mm -hmm. as well um so there's there's all kinds of um interesting things that i think need, need to change uh to make these these events and these spaces more immersive as well mm -hmm. cool. that makes totally right, thanks. sense thanks for that yeah. one thanks for that one Bjorn. uh right we've got mr voice bow oh a while to read your name I, mm -hmm. I, that was i read it completely wrong originally in my head. Right, give you the phone. Okay. Should be able to speak now. Hey, the voice. Uh, yeah. Funny you're talking about uh, high fidelity because I was actually part of the beta testing. Oh wow! No way. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I was. Um, um... I actually met Philip Rosadell, which in fact he's actually coming back to Second Life after th um, 2013. We left the company, so um, he's coming back to Second Life to fix Second Life. Probably all the issues they're probably having and things like that. Um, so because the, the Metaverse took off the name Metaverse before this whole Facebook crap came out, like. He's the original founder of the original metaverses before VR and all this stuff came out. So like yeah. he, 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 you guys were talking about. Um, also, he was talking about the blockchain, which is the, the tied to the crypto. Well, um, that was a couple of yeah. years back when he was talking about that. But it was really cool though meeting him in VR and shaking his hand, like. Like he's really there. He had a full thousand dollar hardware system that scanned his whole <laughs> self and everything. And <laughs> yes, yeah, I yeah. remember. I remember. I met him in there because I was actually I was speaking to someone earlier about this. Actually, um, uh, Christoph in the the, the the crowd. If you're still there, we were talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually saw an interview with him. And I was speaking to you about it as well. I think they do a lot but, of um, cool stuff there. Fidelity. Yeah, I saw an interview with him, and then like I think a week later, I met him in there. Someone introduced me to him in High Fidelity <laughs> with his for his avatar, which was really interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, interested to see what if if they're gonna do something with their spatial audio and kind of go back to the the way things were. Speaking before. of the spatial audio, um, I remember when Philip was talking to hundreds and hundreds of people in one same room with no lag. The they had, a, they had they were trying to do a test as avatar testing and they got up to like 420 something i think yes yeah no, i was there there's no was other out there <laughs> like that so, yeah fidelity yeah. runs so much more minimum requirements compared to like vr chat and everything that's a uh, game engine based which they can only have so much processing power of avatars in the room. That's why in VR chat, you see a lot of people start to lag um, of all the avatars poorly optimized. And uh, looking in this mirror that's high resolution causes inference. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know they had their own issues as well, but it was a very, very interesting, very interesting platform. I know people have forked it now and they're doing, uh, they've got um, Tivoli VR as well so forks of high fidelity still exist and people are uh, working on that as well actually paying cool. people like to uh they're paying t uh, people 20 dollars each to do the testing just to stand in a room a bunch of people and talk to each other and it felt like a real um, real room full of people like it wasn't like super loud either it was actually kind of like quiet because when they have an actual ceo of the company <laughs> talking on stage you know kind of like you guys but like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember it exactly. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that. Actually, I'm getting flashbacks now. We're talking about it. Um, so I'm going to move on. We've got another question. Uh, who have we got now? Oh, okay, uh, oh, Bedouin. Uh, yes. That question. Switch over. Here we go. You should have the megaphone now. Can you hear me? Yep, we got gotcha. you. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I was actually just checking out um, Linden Lab. Is that the same company that Second Life? Um, are they in the Bay Area? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually tried to get, to get a hold of them. I'm trying to, to see what they're doing now. So somebody responded to me that they're doing um, they're a virtual world company with a non-blockchain based economy. So are they making um, games or I'm just kind of curious what they do. Uh, I couldn't give you a sign of the image may be testing out there. Their platform, they kind of their what was proprietary and what was theirs, you know, high fidelity was kind of open source, but the, their audio servers and the, that was their special thing. And they kind of switched to doing spatial audio uh, rooms, which were kind of more like 2D. I, you've seen other apps like it now where you kind of move around these 2D circles, and when you're in contact with each other, you can hear each other, and when you move away uh, from the screen. So that's something they were doing, but I, I'm I'm not sure, not to date with that now, but I, I imagine you can speak to Mr. Voice, who might know a bit more afterwards when we hmm. just uh, unmute everyone's mic. Uh, so how are we doing for time, everyone? How are we doing for time? Thank you. Yep. Looks good. good. Okay, I think we're... Uh, okay, thanks for the question mm -hmm. as well. Sorry, I'll just take the megaphone off. And Bjorn, uh, you're back in with another question, correct? Can you speak, Bjorn? All right, you it. I can see you're muted, but I can also see you have the megaphone, which is strange. Let me try it, try that again. Try one more time. There we go. Can you speak now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it should work. There we go. Cool. Yeah, and now I just wanted to add, um, if you're interested, what uh, Second Life uh, and and Philip Postel is. is it's uh he had a very interesting interview in Wired um I think two months ago and uh mm -hmm. search for it you probably find it. And uh oh, sounds good. He speaks a little bit about um what Second Life was supposed to be, what happened, but also what his future plans are. So that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And for everybody the that. name, can you spell the name, Liam? Uh, Philip Rosedale. That everybody gets the name. Ro how do you spell it? Rose. Yeah, that Rose, everybody Rose gets Dale, it. R O S E D A L E, I believe. That's how his surname is. Yeah. So very simple. If you search Philip Rosedale, yeah, you, search... you find it, find it. Yeah, if you search anything Second Life High Fidelity, the name mm. should come up. But I feel yeah. like we I feel like we now all secretly in here are working for Philip Rosedale and we've just got plants <laughs> to, to throw his name out yeah. there. So Philip Rosedale, mm. are you here? Let's see if any hands go up. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, All right. that's it on the questions. So we can unmute everyone mm -hmm. if you'd like, Christopher, and then people can just move yep. around and, and mingle. Feel free and All mingle. Right. Yeah, great. Thanks for, for being here. And uh, yeah, have a great uh, night and see you on Thanks the for dance a great floor. presentation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, the after party, everyone. Yeah. 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 Get ready for the after party afterwards you can just see x beats up there on the sign uh, natasha yeah. aka dj eliminate will be jane <laughs>